Yes. So let's see. We can move on to oh, so because the paint paraphernalia piece has that pencil. Can you tell us your DIY yes. paint tip? Yeah. This is gonna blow some people's minds. I still am wrapping my head around it, but it's brilliant, and I'm really excited for people to hear this. Um, I'm sure people kind of sort of already do it, um, but I learned. Uh, my entire crew has learned from Tom Costello, who's just one of the most amazing, passionate uh, painters that that I've ever met, and he's um anyway it's a simple thing about how to keep your lines um straight and just shy of the transition to the trim and the ceiling as a wall cover you know if i'm doing a a green wallpaper and the walls are beige and the wall paint comes up on the trim it's like you're gonna have you know green beige trim it's 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 so frustrating so you end up having to paint the trim paint the edge of the ceiling so a suggestion um that i take for granted but i realize not many people do is um you know you you, you go to cut in and some people like to ride it high uh close on the first and then do it quick on the second and clean it up or some people do it um quick on the first and then dial it in on the second. I don't even fret. I use my pencil, especially if I'm dealing with weird, these older buildings, uh, you know. So I just do a soft line on, on the ceiling or on the, on the trim. And this visually, if it's something I feel like, oh, how's that gonna look? I can see it ahead of time. And then I can kind of see how the paint's gonna follow that transition. But I am not worried about riding up onto the trim because I just take my potty knife and um, and obviously wrap it or double wrap it. And then, um, you know, I if it's a little damp, that's helpful. And I just wrap it and then I just ride it down and it gives it that just, you know, a couple, a millimeter or so uh, just off so that when you want to come back, they call you back to repaint the room to a different color. Um, you don't have to repaint the trim if you just, you're staying free of the of the trim and the ceiling and it gives you it just you paint it you wipe it with your putty knife and then you can kind of like see how it looks and you can and if you use the pencil usually the rag will wipe that pencil mark off and um it's very quick it's clean and it just gives you the error on the side of um trim slightly onto the wall but it's clean it's sharp if there's any issue you can you can correct it because you have that affordance of space. It's subtle, but it's um, proven itself time and time again. And it's much faster than masking um, everything, you know? So as a faux finisher, as a wall cover, and as a finisher that's asked to come back and do something else um, uh, on the same walls, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it to, to practice. Did we figure out, is it called French cutting in? Yeah, so... The French cut? You know, that's what Tom calls it. Um, but I did a little Google and, you know, found some weird stuff on the Google. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's the Hollywood face-off thing. I, it was referenced in a couple of blogs. I didn't find anything uh, really... I'm um, still call it French cut, or I'll call it, you know, Tom's tip. But I um, like it. So, so when you're painting walls and cutting along the ceiling, you're leaving a little bit of ceiling paint down onto the wall. Just essentially, so just but enough. But you're looking up, so you don't even yeah. know, you don't even- So you'd rather play on that side of the, of the fence than slightly on, right? I agree, that's how I've always done it. And it does, it gives you that play of if things aren't perfect, you're drawing a line on your own terms, not yeah. following that gap. Right, and that, that little, the width of the blade of the putty knife kind of gives you that affordance to sort of like make it straight and clean and tight. Um, and uh, yeah. And, I think and, Hollywooding is right when you paint the sides of the trim, the wall color, I believe. Is that, what's that? Hollywooding. Hollywood, yeah, when you're just facing it up. Isn't that when you paint the sides of the trim, the wall color? Isn't that for exterior type reference? I, I see it interior enough 
No. This guys do it interior. I swear. Well, the side of the trim. I, I will. I will have a confession to make. Uh, my living room right now. I I hired a guy who used to work for me, um, to paint my living room when my wife was away. We had a ton of work to do, and she wouldn't let me have have it done. She was away, and I had the whole house painted, and I was really busy. I couldn't do it, and they painted the sides of all of my trim with the wall color. It wow. kills me every day. Hey, but um, you were the customer, and that's what you wanted. I, I got what I paid for, and <laughs> and the rooms are stuck. They, like, there was so much work that needed to be done. I didn't have the time. It worked out perfect. Isn't it harder but, to do that, though, like to do it clean, or did they just face off your trim? I, mean, I think they use – I'm not sure how it works. But exterior, we all know, if you're painting clapboards or whatever, yeah. it sure is a lot quicker to not paint those little triangles all the way down the side of the trim board. Yeah. Um, Give them what they want and get paid for it. We always ask them, what do you want? Yeah. If you tell me you want those triangles painted the color of the trim, I can do that. But that yeah. costs a lot more. Even, some people don't even know. Like, you know, really, it, like, I, I just really feel like a lot of times, like, I'm betting the client, too. And I want to make sure, you know, I give them their options. And same with products. Like, they might want to use Ferro Ball or... Um, Benjamin Moore and um, you know I do they're all very credible coatings some are better functioning um, than others and um, you know like Nick was saying when you look at uh, two gallons in a, in a room and there's a $30 difference so for $60 you can have the more better coverage, washability, feature function, um, I can only paint so fast. So whatever product it is, is, is all the same to me. But wouldn't you want for $60, wouldn't you want? Uh, but that's up to them. I just try and make sure that I educate them. And, um, and you know, there are certain products that are uh, better than others. I'll, I'll never better. forget Thanks. So. when I, the first time I've either heard you talk about or I've seen you in person with bare paint sample cans, blending things together to do a touch up someplace. Yeah. And that to me is, it, it was beautiful. I, the ego in me would have never allowed me to go to Home Depot and get bare paint to blend it together to do a touch up. But that's, I don't think that's right. I think that you were right to do well, what you did. It worked what, perfectly. I, and, I looked at what I had to work with, what am I working on, what is asked of me, and so, that's, I, I, again, I want to take care of what it is that's asked of me, and if that's the product, if it's a situation where I'm working against someone else's work, or someone else's full finish, or someone else's, like, I can't, ego has no space for that like and and or if somebody messed up like what are we all going to sit around and, and dwell on this or or can we just like take care of this and make it right um we can talk about it later if you need to but at the end of the day you know things happen you, it's just pain like you know there's no six week lead time for it to come over from whatever like you know you go down the store miss tints happen um, bad batches happen. It, it's unfortunate. It's frustrating. But at the end of the day, like, make it right. Get the client happy. Get paid. Everyone's good. Move along because someday I might be the one who who made a mistake that I can't fix. And hopefully there'll be someone out there that that would be able to try and not you know shame me and just sort of do what they can. With the and for the record. We're not talking about like painting the outside of a house in bare paint. We're talking about you, you are blending a piece of a vent, right? To make it the, you continued the wallpaper look through a vent and you needed to like touch something up. It, from what I recall, we're not talking about painting the outside of houses with bare paint. No one would ever recommend doing that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, was that the bird wallpaper? Yeah. Let's, let's hey. talk about hanging wallpaper. Yeah. Because we don't do it, um, but I was, I've been lucky enough to experience a 
alternative finishes wallpaper install. And I had my mind blown that day. The, the fish one or the, the fish? Herb? The fish one. You, you had a small bathroom with wainscoting, so it was just the top half. And mm -hmm. already hours had been spent preparing mentally, writing notes and testing. But mm -hmm. ex like, for the record, many, many more hours, I would argue, you, you can tell me, but many more hours went into planning out the layout of the wallpaper than ever went into installing the wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. Many more. Yeah. Could you explain to me how that works and, and why? Um, so you know how like, uh, I'm sure that you've seen slate stone or something, tile flooring, and then there's that rogue piece right in the middle of the entry and you're like, why would they do that? Um, wallpaper is kind of like that too. And uh, especially if there's a pattern or a design, um, I mean, wallpaper's coming back strong. And it's it's amazing. I mean, it's it's obviously a finish all in it to itself. So in this case with the fish, um, wallpaper, like fabric or anything, has uh, big fish, little fish. Um, in this case, and it was a small bathroom. So sometimes people will say, and I'll ask them, is there something in particular you really like? So in a bathroom, you're more likely experiencing uh, sitting at the toilet. You are facing the mirror, but you see behind you above the door. Um, there, there's, again, it's, for me, it's specificity. I want to know that I took as much into consideration, not just come in and slap it up. So in that case, there was, um, say, this 30 inches between that big fish and that big fish. And if the client really likes the big fish, I want to give her the big fish. In that paper, it was a drop match, which meant that every other sheet had a different top. So it'd be A, B, A, B. That's fine. Um, don't want to bore you guys with that stuff. But, um, but, I, but I wanted to make sure that, like, you know, I don't want the fish to be lost in this corner. So how does the fish line up every other sheet throughout the room? And wouldn't it be really nice with the where the sconce in the mirror is to really make sure that the fish isn't lost behind the mirror? So for us, like, make a plan, work the plan. Um, so, you know, it's sometimes, a lot of times the rooms are not perfectly, per they're not perfect. So you might have an inch growth on either side. So how can we do this so that we don't make it look more pronounced? And how can we make, give the illusion of straight? Um, so we, we, I need to know that, you know, I can't please everyone. I can only do the best that I can. But in the event that someone is unhappy about something. Um, I, I'm not saying it doesn't happen um, or that it won't happen in the future, but I really, really, really try to take so much into account. And, and so I am ready. Um, I guess that's where my ego isn't, uh, or my, where my ego is, is that I can defend our approach, our intention and our decisions. Um, and, and that's up to me to, to make sure I have as much information for me to have that. On that project, there, no matter what, there was going to be fish that got cut off at the tops and fish that got cut off at the bottoms. It was a, it was a bunch of fish all over, different colors, <laughs> different sizes, bright, beautiful fish mm -hmm. with a white background. And no matter what, at the top of the ceiling and at the wainscoting, you were going to have to cut off and there was going to be a, a section of a fish, not a whole fish. Mm -hmm. And in the corners eventually there was going to be some spot where it had to end and they weren't going to match perfectly together. Yes. So I, I watched you for hours sitting there mocking up and you, I, you asked me like, which fish do you like best? Like what are, which fish, what is the fish we don't want to cut off and have half a fish of which fish are least prominent in this pattern mm -hmm. that we could feel better about cutting them off. All of that thought went into where those, fish where that pattern laid out mm -hmm. it was amazing i it changed the whole way i ever looked at wallpaper and made me want to install it even less now because i could net like what it would take to compete with a wallpaper installer at your level well not not, not many people do it though you i know, know. i've seen many fun. people wallpaper that didn't put that kind of thought into where the pattern repeated what was most prominent what parts got cut off but to see you do it 
was beautiful. And then I got to see it again um, at the 50 Liberty Project. Mm -hmm. The amount of time spent planning out where this paper will go, <laughs> which birds, you had names for each of the type of birds that were in that paper. It sounds excessive, you guys, but really it was the only way that Linda and I could distinguish which bird was which, yeah. One and was we'll have to, in a morning, minute, we'll find out the names of the birds because they were pretty funny. Yeah. But yeah. that that idea that you're looking at a, a wallpaper and deciding what are the most important parts that we really want to show off and what parts are we willing to sacrifice? Um, yeah. Rather oh, we're, than just we're, like, we're oops, this is just where it started and this is where it ended and yeah. oops, this is what we're dealt left with. More times than not, you just don't want something really obvious to fall on a corner that's out. You know, so it's sort of taking all the variables into account, uh, into account. And the installing part is the easiest. The painting part is the easiest. It's just, like I said, I, I feel like the finishing portion of what we do is, is a, a third of um, what we bring to the table. I, it doesn't work for everybody. A lot of people give me a hard time, uh, but they know that's me. And I feel like if you're going, if I'm going to have a reputation out there, uh, amongst many other qualified installers and finishers um, that are equally capable. Um, I would love to be differentiated by the fact that um, she cares. And, um, you know, you know, if anyone's going to figure this out, it would be Jessica. Um, that means a lot to us. And uh, I think that's why I strive to just uh, continuously give that that intention and and leaving a part of myself with each opportunity uh it's not that hard to do i'm already there you know uh, but it's it's a way for me to know that i did the best i could and um and if someone else gets the job i i'm super happy for them i i will hope the client's happy i trust that they are um i'm just not getting to a point where i feel like people now know what comes with alternative finishes um uh, not only quality, but also um, just grace and integrity. And, um, uh, you know, and so I feel like we have a fighting chance at each project. And, and if it doesn't happen on this one, it'll happen maybe maybe the next round. Or, you know, I just like to keep all my doors open with all my peers. Um, because, you know, if, if, if quality work in this trade um, that I'm so proud of succeeds, we all succeed, and um, I think I think integrity is really clutch um, when we're in a trade that you don't have to necessarily have a license for, and a homeowner could go to Home Depot and get a couple of paintbrushes. I, I'm super excited for homeowners who want to do something themselves. If they have any questions, I'll answer it. I'll, I'll help them along the way. Um, I don't take it personal that personal either because there's a gratification we all get, but then there's a time when we do something. Uh, as a contractor or as a homeowner that we're like, oh my gosh, I messed that up. Um, then you call us, you know? And, and when you just, when you don't want to have to think about it, right? I think what I try to bring in my company is that like, you just know, like it's going to get done right. And, and we're not, I always try to say that we are, we are low risk, high quality at scale. Yeah. Like that's my, that's what I, tr that's my competitive, that's my unique, value proposition that's what we're trying to do is be incredibly low risk if you hire us like you just know it's going to get done right and yeah. you don't have to babysit us and you don't have to like if there's no risk there you get to spend your t like mental energy someplace else and i know that's the same with, with you if, when they hire you you were just down in the cape earlier in the week mm -hmm. they send you down to the cape they don't have to think twice like yeah they, justice is going to do it they live, in LA. Awesome. they live in la and i asked them you know you want to feed you know do you want any water, any plants? Do you want you had a couple of packages? Your house is still standing. Um, yeah, I mean, I have keys to uh, at least six houses that I've had for years. And again, back to that that queue, and um, I'm very grateful. I have some clients that just I, my queue is what it is because I'm usually the last in, and so you know we gotta. I don't want to sit it on my hands. So when one job's not ready, hopefully we can go to the next one in line. And by being um, having a retainer, my clients who have a unique situation, an emergency situation, or, hey, we go away these weeks throughout the year, can you fit us in? And most of my clients know that um, 
Burning Man is the only time that I'm not here. So they're always like, when's Burning Man again? And then try and fit it in before or after. Um, but they also say that, you know, you are who you are because of Burning Man. And to answer your question earlier, Burning Man for me is actually uh, kind of like a purge. Um, I paint things and it burns down. I paint with brushes that haven't been washed for two weeks in bare paint uh, and it's dusty and you know, OSHA isn't really there. And you, just, <laughs> you do, you do the thing, you help assist. And um, at the end, everyone is an art festival and, and I'm, a, I'm a part of building the city. I'm a part of an amazing community. And then it all burns down at the end. And it's sort of like, I work so hard to do everything right to make sure there's no dust that it's completely ready. And it's perfectly, you know, I filtered the paint and I've reduced it just right. And all the things. There's there's so much of a, a cleansing or release that I get from, you know, doing a project, um, sharing what I do there and for it to just to let it go. I think it allows me to sort of reset and humbles me in that the craft that we bring to the table um, is is really just what does today bring and do the best you can with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. Um, Let's see. We could talk for someone had a question. Actually, let's answer a question. Actually, there's multiple questions. Oh, there's we'll save that one. Uh, yeah. As a business owner, how can I step out of my comfort zone into fine finishing with little experience? I, I personally, I Jessica has more experience with this, but I would say like the first thing you got to do is like practice on your own stuff. Um, or a lot of the, one thing that I've done a lot that's been very successful for me is I take a client who's willing to, who wants a, you know, a B finish. And I'm like, Hey, I'm just going to make this an A. Is that okay with you? Like, don't pay me anymore. I'm going to spend the time now. As long as you're cool with like, maybe this takes a few more days, but if you give me those few more days, I will give you an A finish. Mm -hmm. I think in my experience, that's been a great way to up your level of finish is just kind of take it on the chin and pay for your education. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, it's just time, time and experience and knowing that with each, if you're open to what you're doing, what it's, when you do it this way and what you get with that, um, it's teaching you, it's time and embrace the failures, embrace that it's not quite at this at ZK level you will get there. I mean, I worked with fine paints a year 15 years ago. It's not fair to say to somebody who's just been working with it for a couple of years, I, I, you'll get there. I was where you are. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The fact that you want, a person wants to get there. I still strive to get better and more efficient. Um, you know, I only do so many gold leaf projects. I don't, I don't do them all the time. So I'm not as proficient as I could be. And so by being grounded and like where my skill set is, what am I striving to do? Thankfully, there's YouTube and so many different resources now. Um, I take classes still um, through, you know, two day or five day workshops that um, they're not going to make just because you buy this paint and use this brush. It doesn't mean it's going to look like what you expect. Understand what goes in, you get what you give. And that's going to be time. And I, and I still, 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 I, I'm humbled in that. Yeah, could I be faster? But the minute I think I got it, something goes wrong. And so for me, it's like I, I'm just always reminded to do the best I can, put in the time, understand what's, what's happening. Um, you know, you could do amazing work. I've done amazing work. And the client's like, uh, you know, so it's like you got to be kind to yourself in that like what is fine finish to you what is fine finish to that designer what is fine finish to is that contractor um you need to set your own bar invest the time and and energy into like what does it take to get there and practice 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 and if you can do it like you said on your own projects or upgrade it for a homeowner if they have the time or whatever um it's just going to make, you may have to redo something. My doors in the beginning, I, 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 <laughs> I redo them like three times just because I was like, ah, you know, 
Um, uh, we're about to redo this summer. We're going to be redoing the first gloss door that I ever did. Um, and I'll definitely gonna be posting about it, but it's, a, it's embarrassing to look at today. At the time, I was like, so thrilled. I was like, look at this, this is amazing. And now I'm gonna bring this door back in and we're gonna give them a whole new door. And, and they, what's that? Did you offer it or did they? Uh, so, all right, here's another. So I make, everyone makes mistakes. I made a big mistake on that door. I didn't, and it, it, I'm paying, you know, I'm gonna pay for it now and fix it. Um, I installed the weather stripping on the bottom of the door backwards. So the channel stuck, like it was the first time I'd ever taken the weather stripping off the bottom of the door to rack it. I didn't know any better. And when I put it back on, it just seemed right. Mm -hmm. But the, now I, we've done so many, I know how they go. And that flange that comes up, up to the, op, over the door needs to be on the inside of the door. Yeah. I have it on the outside. Water was coming down, yeah. and collecting in that channel, and it was causing water damage and the paint is failing at the bottom of that door now. Mm -hmm. So client reached out to me, it's been a few years. He's like, hey man, what's going on? So I was like, please, I'll take the door back. We're gonna repaint the door, put the weather stripping on properly. Um, but that the first time you do something, yeah, it, it, we keep asking all the time. Just, just do did, it. Even if you did it, perf you did perfectly that you could then, but you learned from the weather stripping. So, like I said, it's it all, it's all important. Um, you know what I mean? Including like now, you can say when you're taking it off, make no future doors, make note uh, or take a picture of how it looked beforehand. Make sure that person puts it in the same way. I mean. All these things we're learning every day if you just pay attention. Yeah. And, and, and you and like, your mistakes. We're learning from your mistakes. And that just makes us, like as I said, there's no space for ego if, if we want to be better. Uh, there's plenty of work. So here's another question. Uh, this is a good one. Have either of you ever had a time and materials job that had gone very wrong and went way over budget? I know I have. Um, well, I mean, I struggle, you know, I might, I get in, my pride gets in the way and I spend 12 hours on something and I'm like, oh, I'm only going to charge them like nine hours and 15 minutes. Like for real, my bills are like 9.33, um, hours. Um, but I have done it not to exceed sometimes for just peace of mind, uh, for the client. Um, you know, so I'll say, <clears throat> Um, not to exceed 3,200. Um, but I also have been very clear and transparent of what is expected and what the steps will consist of. So I'm pretty over the top thorough. My estimates take a lot longer, but if there's a misunderstanding, it's caught right away. Um, I don't, I, I think sometimes on extras, people, there's so much happening at the end. Um, I, you know, I get, there's a little, I've had some times where it's a little like, oh, um, on the extras, but I just take very thorough about taking notes and and pictures of other things. And it, you know, sometimes some of the best money you'll ever make is a job you never took on. So I'm not trying to give a Lamborghini away for a Mercedes. Like, I'll give you what you want. I'm would like. I'm I'm assuming I'm going to get paid um, for what I'm giving you. Um, that to me is a no-brainer as far as extras, uh, T&M wise. It's pretty easy for me on T&M because I, I, I really, I hold them accountable, uh, you know, whoever it is that I'm working with. Like I make sure, so do you want us to get these drips? So basically sometimes we'll just do the, we'll do the thorough A work at eye level for the client. So if he's six foot three and the wife is five foot two, then we'll kind of use that range. We're going A and we'll take care of drips. We'll A level, take care of the drips and brush strokes more at A level at this range. And then everything else will be about here. And usually a day or two into it, make sure that we're good, we're good. And then we rock and roll because a lot happens. And um, I work too hard to um, have to deal with not getting paid or drama or misunderstandings. So it's um, it happens, but hopefully with experience you learn 
the right questions to ask. And um, it's an accountability to the client and, and on your end to, uh, to be honest. And with that honesty, I think showing up on time, if we showed up, there's nothing more disrespectful than not showing up on time, in my opinion. So if, if the client has to leave for work or whatever, um, we get there at 8.04. I'm not going to say we showed up at eight, you know what I mean? Because like, I, I, I feel like integrity is clutch and um, we strive to always be there just, you know, on the front end, let the homeowner do their thing. There's nothing more complimenting um, than a homeowner being with that. We just met leaving their home within 15 minutes and saying, okay, hey, have a good day. Call me if you need anything. And uh, we take that. Um, um, that's really important to us to maintain that. And so I hold, I hold my clients and um, myself accountable to the terms of what is expected um, on both sides. Yeah, I, I've had um, time and materials jobs go wrong in the past. Um, and every time it was because I didn't take care of my end, like you're saying, uh, you know, if you wait, especially I had a, a large job a uh, long time ago, I, I was a mess at the time and I, it was a huge mistake, but I, you know, I was waiting weeks to total up where we were at. It, you know, I think on TNM you need to be on top of where you're at all the time. End of the week, you better have a total in a report. If we do a TNM job for a client now, we are totaling it up and we're giving a report at the end of every week. That way, there's no surprises. You know, nobody. I don't, I don't care how we work for people with money, but it doesn't matter. Like. Yeah. If you think you're paying 40000 for something and somebody gives you a bill for 55000 even if it's amazing work, no matter what, that is not going to sit well. So that idea of communicating well on T&M jobs, having very clear, like, it, so if it's a bigger one, you better have milestones. Don't just say, I think it's going to be 1,000 hours. Figure out where is it going to look like at 100? Where is it going to look like at 200? So that yeah, know where you fall. if you're 400 in and you're way behind schedule, you're having to call, talk with a client today not 850 hours in saying hey we're going to be twice the budget like i think tnm can be very dangerous because it, it it can feel like a blank check and it needs to feel you need to be even more thorough i know GC, gcs that work like that they're doing even more accounting even more book work yeah. than if they were bidding the job because you need to be so transparent and so on top of numbers. So TNM is definitely a dangerous thing if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but, but I, I don't always have to prove anything, but I, like I said, note taking the day of the Boston bombing, I was done in the install, it was a mural install in a, a small beauty shop or whatever. And I said, um, hey, I'm done. Did you, he, he asked if I could touch up some cabinetry or whatever and some trim. And I said, I'm happy, I'm gonna go eat lunch. I'm happy to vacuum, to, you know, before I do it. But if you wanna do that, that's fine. Just letting you know that needs to be done before I, um, so I'm gonna be charging you to vacuum, whatever the case. I literally came back, I took a picture of the dust on the thing and my watch. It was like six minutes before the first bomb went off. So I, something like that, like, it reminds me of like, I just take pictures or take notes, or I'll set, I'll have it. It doesn't mean I show them, but it's like, or I texted him and said, hey, I'm going to lunch. I'm gonna take care of that, that trim and cabinet touch up for you. Um, it needs to be backed because he had some laborers there. Happy to do it, but for the sake of time and cost, you know, I'll be back in, you know, at one o'clock or, or two, two o'clock. And um, anyway, um, but I had a picture and I had a text. And so if there's ever, now, if I had to do something for say even 30 minutes, that's still $60. Now somebody's getting back charged. Somebody scratched the thing. So I don't, I'm not trying to put it on anybody. I'm just saying, I'm just here to do what's asked of me. That's it. Like I said, the, the simpler I can make it, the less I get. It's, it's just easier for my conscience to not get too hung up. I, I don't want to be standing, I, one of my first big jobs on my own, I, I was a sub sub and, and everyone had liens on the job and wasn't getting paid. And I was like, Oh my God, this is how I go down. <laughs> you know? Um, and, um, I learned from that, like communication is key. I just happened to have really good relationships with 
um, lawyers, ironically, were my, the lawyers representing the GC and the client um, were both clients of mine. I lucked out on that one, but it saved my ass um, in getting paid. I don't, I don't think I would have survived that one. But but to be in a I don't want to be in line anymore. I don't want to ever have to worry about that. And um, so I don't I don't really give much room for that. But it takes a while to establish that trust. And and I I will go down to um, uh, seventy five an hour um, if it's it not not for anything. You know what I mean? Like it's it all depends on, on what it is and the situation. And and it's like you know, especially peer to peer. Um, there's where there's a will, there's a way you know, especially like I just fixed some cabinet doors, uh, carpenters helper thought it was going in the trash and it was just taken off so he could do something to the wall. And so he had to replace the two cabinet doors and I never met the guy before. Um, but you know, I, you know, we all got to help each other out. We all going to have situations that aren't pleasant and we just need to learn from them. Um, uh, make them right like you're doing with that door and, and move past them uh be a better person from it if you're willing to share those experiences so others avoid it again like i want everyone to succeed i want everyone to be prosperous like it, life's too short that's awesome so do you have someone's asking i've said this a couple of times like, do you have a retirement plan jessica <laughs> it is <laughs> It's probably somebody I know. Um, <laughs> um, I know. I, you know, I have a, somebody I respect a lot. And he's like, do you want to work for your business or do you want to work on your business? Um, so, no, I don't, honestly. Uh, my dad passed away not too long ago, long enough, but still it gave me a lot more, like, perspective Um on a personal note, just as far as like um, life and immediacy. And uh, I know it's fairly irresponsible to, to not really have a plan or like 10 year plan of like branding and sell the business. Um, I need to be more mindful, but um, um, I'm aware it's, of that. It's, it's tough. I, I talked about it before. I, I think it's it's part of the craftsmanship trap of when you're a craftsperson and there's a business to run, they they're oftentimes they they fight each other, you know. And I mean, I know I've come from that. I I came from pure craftsman. That's me, uh, you know. And I I like belittled and shunned and and like made excuses why running a business a painting was not for me mm -hmm. but the, like the truth of the matter was like if i wanted to do anything i i need to balance those in some way and mm -hmm. i think everyone has to decide where that line is especially as business owners mm -hmm. um but it is it's tough you know it it's really tough um well look at so many people recreate themselves and 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 have worked for a company for 15 20 years and they're like i'm gonna give it a go um there's no time like the present and and life happens you know and uh 2008 was a big big thing uh 9 11 is why i even went into business 2008 reminded me of um what i really need to survive in this business and now with covid and and next fall and and um you know it just gives you a little more perspective but Absolutely. Um, I think we should all be um, taking care of our, our, our future. And um, I just am not, it hasn't been my focus, um, but I'm aware that it needs to be for those I, you know, are in my life and I care about and for myself. I can't do this forever. Um, you know, so um, it's a good reminder. Yeah. So there's another question here. You can... Feel free to share about it or not. Um, you're when you are rolling and tipping a gloss wall. Mm -hmm. It's there's a, a a tool that you might use that might shock some people. <laughs> For the record, I don't I don't think I would put I don't know if there's anyone that I'm aware of in this country that applies fine paints of Europe oil enamel at a higher level than you do with a brush. Thank you. 
If if you've never seen some of, and we're gonna keep everyone send Jessica DMs for the next two weeks. We're gonna keep asking her to post more stuff. Yeah, I'm working on it. I know, and it's been amazing. But if if you've ever seen Jessica's brushwork in real life, it, it's astounding. So if you would feel free, if you if you're open to it, we would love to hear about these brushes, how incredibly expensive they are, and how rare and difficult they are. Fine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's made from unicorn tears. And um, <laughs> so there are other great brushes like, um, uh, you know, the Princeton Redline, Pierre Finkelstein. There's some really nice, everyone has their like stiffness or whatever. Um, but I typically, um, on the final, I, I love the Worcester Black. Um, Worcester foam that holds more paint has a, a, the right amount of stiffness and I can spread it really evenly um, and then I um, the Princeton red line is, is very similar um, but I just like that this holds very well the shape and in it and literally I'm just I spread it out evenly and you can feel it you, you could just feel it and it is a whopping um, hundred and 89 pennies. <laughs> so, so you're in multi-million dollar homes doing a, a gloss room that could cost tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And the final tool that touches that paint is a dollar and 89 cents. For me, um, I might use a Picasso for um, bigger surfaces. Um, I mean, like I said, I can use Free Willy too. I'm, I, I'm honest about that. I mean, it may not look it, where there's a will there's a way I, I'm not beholden to anything it's just my preference and process um, but I am expanding a little bit um, with different viscosities and, and materials I feel like the paints are changing so quickly I see on the forums you know people talking about um, water based lacquers and, and um, not spraying the boxes um, so I'm, I'm always open to what's working for other people um, additives they're using, um, heating up the material. Um, you know, if, for me, it's, it's it going back to the individual that wants to get into finer finishing. When I'm striving for a finer, finer finish, I, I have enough build and great prep that I, I, I feel that um, I tend to go to this brush more often than not. Um, Can you show us what exactly is the brush and where do you find it? Oh, um, so at any craft store. Michael's, specifically Michael's. around us, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't buy anything else <laughs> at these craft stores. But um, so Craft Smart and uh, Maestro is the other brand, I think. Um, craft Smart? Craft, craft Smart. Craft um, Smart. And um, there is something similar. I mean, they, they have white, gold, and, and you know, brown. Um, they're not production. Um, you know, they do have three inch and the three inch can be, you know, I use all different types of brushes, but for me, if it's a door, if it's a handrail, um, yeah, I, it's my jam. No shame in it. You, I, I use asking. brushes for my heels and, and, um, uh, you know, the doors just for good foam brushes. I'm, I'm a big fan of. You raised your rates from 107 to 120 recently. Yeah. And saw no pushback and the queue stayed pretty much the same, right? Yeah, no pushback at all. Um, at all. I, I, I was really lucky. Honestly, you and, and a lot of other people were sort of like, you know, um, because there's, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And so I go, I go look at some projects and, um, and so with these new relationships, new clients or new leads, I would sort of, I would just say I'm 120 an hour, um, blah, 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 you know, and I, I, I get a deposit or I get a mock-up fee. I get paid for my mock-ups. So my research and all the things. Which is, I've been, I've been so pushing for that for so long because we both know that you spend so much time that you don't charge for. It. Yeah. That but I'm, I'm learning. I'm We're working, and I think that will be your retirement fund. Is just the all of those hours that you didn't spend, that you didn't bill for, that where you were in the lab 
doing the real nitty gritty, super skilled yeah. stuff. I have 10 errors and one that was right, but I learned 10 other ways to do yes. 10 different finishes. And you could never have gotten to that final product without failing on 10 different mixtures and 10 different samples. So you should get paid for that because all of that went into the final product. And on the flip side, 25 years later, the finishes that I am doing that I can do swiftly, um, that I've gone past that investment of learning curve and time and error, um, I'm now getting paid and compensated for all the times that I lead. It's like the business. saying they say about the, the locksmith who the first, the, the one year locksmith comes, fixes a lock in an hour and they pay him a hundred bucks. That same locksmith comes back 20 years later, he fixes it in a minute and a half and he charges a hundred bucks. And the guy's like, what the heck? It took you a minute. And he's like, you're paying for all of my time and skill. And having all the tools to, yeah. I'm here to do what you wanted. And I told yeah. you it'd be a hundred. And that, that mentality, I think of, of a understanding that we're, we have value and we can charge more and B staying small enough to build the supply side high enough, like you did where I have, a, you, if you have two years worth of work lined up, maybe you should raise your rates. Yeah. If you don't have any work, it's going to be a lot harder. So, you know, I, I think that idea of combining extreme skill with extreme passion and staying small is a beautiful formula to having high rates. Yeah. And I don't need whole houses. Like I, I, I know so many talented people like yourself. And, and so for me, it's I like, well, at the time I jumped from, you know, from 65 and then the jump, uh, yeah, my queue was just so long. I was tired. And, um, and so I felt like, you know, I want this client to be taken care of. Who do I know that's going to, to do that? And I, I know you and I know a lot of amazing, talented people. And some people aren't available. Some people are um, like, you know, we know people who can get what would take us a month would take that company a week. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but I feel like we, if we all just collaborate and, and so I needed, like, I would say my cue is, um, you know, I comfortably at six to nine months and, um, comfortably six to nine months strong, but things move and shake, move and shake. And then I, you know, there's situations that, that fit in there. And then I have those that are like a year, a year and a half or two years out, um, that they've already set the retainer, but the project's nowhere close. Um, but usually we come in and do one thing and almost all the time we are doing so much more than that. So I leave a little bit of room in that queue. I almost need to leave more room. I, you know, we might be coming in for a two day thing and then we end up leaving with uh, 15 days of work to be added in the queue or take care of the situation to get them across the finish line. Oh, you do painting too. Again, there's the ethics involved of like, respecting the whole process but you know at the end of the day we i want the client to be happy i want the client to be fair to everyone involved in the project i want everyone involved in the project to be fair to the client because you know we all have our our not everyone can to each their own you know what i mean and i just i just feel like if the client's happy you're going to get paid i and think the relationship building and the word building is so key, right? To any of the new businesses, people ask all the time. I think it's building relationships. You build a relationship with, you find a way to build a relationship with one person. And then you build trust throughout that relationship. And that builds. And if you never lose them, and then you get another one, and then you get another one. If you keep planting seeds and watering them, magically, 15 years later, you have a queue that's, six to nine months long and it's your 120 an hour it doesn't happen overnight you can't like you didn't plot to do this this was not some like master plan from 15 years ago that you're executing which is why i think it's so unique it, it's organically you found this thing that works that i think many people would love to have yeah. but it's hard to build those relationships sustain those relationships and keep building them well, I think it's getting positive too. Like, I think there's a lot of situations where painters just do exteriors, interiors, not the type of stuff that that I do. And um, 
and so the home they were called in for because something went wrong or they obviously don't want to call the person they called the last time they got it painted so for my approach it's 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 not shitting on the previous person like i allow the client to feel heard but i'm here to focus on the positive and what i can bring to the table and i just i think by keeping that positivity and and good intentions i i i don't go to barbers um but i feel like it's kind of like when uh guys get their hair cut every couple weeks i'm assuming now typically it's what 15 to 25 dollars i'm assuming you have the boom 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 done or you have the one where you get the hot towel you know, and you get the, he listens to you, you want it a little tighter or whatever you guys call it. And, and you feel heard and, and, and it, you leave there, it took about 10 minutes longer, you paid a little bit more, but you feel good about it. You feel like the person listened to you, they gave you an experience and, and, and then, you know, you feel good and it translates and, and, you know, people who feel good and excited about their projects, they, they also talk up the contractor or the finisher. Oh my gosh, he was great or she was great. And she, she, you know, she even, I told her my favorite fish was this and, and look how she put the fish here and here and here, you know? So I, I, it's so such a little thing, but that attention um, and that experience of people feeling heard and to show up and to give them what they want and to get paid for, doing what it is they asked of you for the price that you said it would be it's an accountability and no no one is more important than the other we need each other the client we need clients clients need us we and need i think what you said what you said the client how the client feels i'm more and more convinced every day is the only thing that matters or at least it's the most important thing how a client feels is is a i'm just speaking to myself you know when the when the job first starts and you sell the job and they're excited about the job and you're you know the, the idea is there and they trust you because they just signed the contract they're 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 feeling so good and the difficult thing is how do we have this two month long project where at the end of it at least if not throughout most of the cycle of the project they still feel good Especially when they're out of time, out of patience, out of money. I mean, so much stuff has happened. I know. That, I that to me is what time. you're so good at. And because you, you care. But making people feel, the client, feel good throughout the project and especially at the end, but the whole time. Where the, where the, it's about the feeling of the client. It's not about me and how I feel. I'll feel good later when the clients felt good the whole time. And to me, that's, that's how you build a successful business. And it, it, if I would have known that a long time ago, I think I would have been so much better off. And I still, I might know it, but practicing it is, is a whole other thing. But we're going to learn too from some clients will never be truly happy. And or some designers or, or uh, entities involved, architects and we're all in this together, you know, and I feel like we're all entitled to have good days and bad. We're all entitled to not be totally ecstatic. I expected this, but I, I, I feel if I've done everything in my power to vet and to uh, really understand what it is that they're asking of me and they truly, I've done everything I can to communicate what it's going to require time and money to achieve that. There could end up being a situation where they're just, not happy and and i learned you learn from that you learn about communication and uh or accountability there's some designers who are like yeah 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 and then yeah. like awesome 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 and then the homeowner's like wait wait what and so i don't mind taking a little extra time um i i i'm sure it annoys some people but that's just my process and that's how i roll and they just you know they might roll their eyes and they're like I know I got to get you a sample and oh, yeah, okay. So I'm letting you know that we're going to be ready for in four months. And, um, I appreciate that it means a lot because that's how I do things. And, and that's important for me to focus on, you know, when it's your time. And, um, again, that's how I sleep at night. And that's how I know that, uh, tomorrow's another day and whoever it is I worked for and work with, um, 
is going to get the same thing and that same dedication um, um, and respect um, that I gave for the last 23 years. Um, I hope I never lose that. It's awesome. So we have about five minutes left. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask you your worst story or your most embarrassing moment. We know that you're an amazing craftsperson, so you probably don't have much. I know we talked a little bit about it. I, I'm interested to hear what's your most embarrassing moment that you, that you can think of. Um, yeah, this one was a reach, but um, so we do a lot of different types of wall covering. We're very methodical. It's like second nature to us. And so uh, Linda, who's worked with me for a very long time, was uh, having a baby. And so a couple other peers, we got together and we're going to rock and roll and we're going to, we're going to get the nursery painted and we're going to, you know, nothing too crazy, just paint and throw up some wallpaper up on this like angled ceiling. And so we're like, yeah, 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 do, do, do. And so at the end of the day, it was paintings dry and it's like, okay, we're going to put this wallpaper in, in the four quadrants in this plywood ceiling. Right? And the wallpaper would make it look better than what it did. And um, so my girlfriend is there who at the time was going to grad school uh, in Oregon and was visiting. And Linda's wife is there. And so, you know, it's our time to shine. <laughs> Get out of the way. I'm going to hang this wallpaper. So we're like, yeah. Boo -boo. And so we hang the first quadrant. And Linda's wife comes in and goes, oh. And I guess Linda knew what that meant. She goes, what, what's wrong? She goes, nothing. And she goes, I think it's upside down. <laughs> and I was just like, and I know it wasn't a commission job, but it was the most awkward, embarrassing moment for like, Linda, this is, this is our jam. And then here's our partners both being like, oh, you, I'm going <laughs> to, <laughs> and so I just feel like, you know, that never happens, but it happens. So we were able to salvage it because she just got barely enough. But, um, but it was, it was humbling because even in times where you're doing something for a friend or for yourself or above and beyond for a customer, things aren't always going to go the way you assume or hope or expect them to go. And, um, again, it's like, we grow from it. We're human and making it right, like you're doing with your door. I, I think that that's what's going to separate the, the craft from the hobby. Awesome. Jessica, this has been insane. Two hours. I, we could go another hour, but we just can't do it. We'll have to have you back. Maybe I'll uh, have enough confidence to finally do an Instagram story. Yes. Everyone, if you're not following Jessica, Alternative Finishes on Instagram. Um, guys. We're going to all encourage her to keep posting her amazing work. Uh, and thank you again very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Zach. You got it. All right. Bye. All right, guys. That was insane. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, again, like and share this afterwards. I'm going to post both of these. Um, next week, we'll get them edited up and put out into a podcast form. And um, some of the, the stuff will be cut out and put on YouTube. Um, Sunday night, ZK Live, we're going to have uh, a friend of mine, local business owner. Um, he owns a manufacturing, custom manufacturing company. They do powder coating um, as well as some sprayed finishes. But we're going to talk about um, powder coating. We're going to talk about taking over a company from your parents, from your father, and, and all the stuff that comes with that. He's a great young guy, super smart. Um, I'm really excited to have him on here. Uh, but thanks for coming, guys.